Hey guys, this is Carl from Technical Enduro Skills Training School. A uh, quick video today on some uh, mechanical work on both mine and my son's bikes. Uh, this is Dan. Uh, he runs a company called DM Performance based in Carshalton. Uh, Dan has been working on mine and my son's bikes for 12, 13 years. Um, he first worked on my bikes, uh, my son's CRF 50 um, and on every other bike uh, since. So Dan is going to give us a few tips and tricks today. Uh, he's going to tell us what you do to a brand new bike when you get it. He'll also take us through what sort of stuff you do to a used bike. Uh, also the kind of stuff that you need to keep an eye out for when you come out of the winter and you've ridden in a lot of sort of wet and mucky stuff um, and you may have washed your bike a lot during that time and maybe not have kept on top of maintenance as much as you could. So um, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll have a chat with yep. Dan. Dan will take us through some of the stuff and, um, and, and he'll give us a few tips and tricks along the way. Cool. Dan, so the next question is, um, I mean, this is a new bike, but if you get bikes in here that has been uh, extensively ridden throughout the winter, uh, uh, trail bikes, yeah. uh, guys who do practice days with uh, some of the local, uh, at the local tracks, um, and even the, the guys who, who, who do some racing, what are the most common things that you come across on bikes who's just been through the winter season? The, I mean, really, the most common is Moisture is a, a pretty bad killer for a motorbike in terms of like wheel bearings, head bearings, linkage bearings, all that kind of stuff. You know, you go and ride in, in horrible sloshy mud and then you come back and you jet wash the hell out of it and you just put it back in the shed. Now, I'm not saying take your bike apart every time you jet wash it and all that kind of stuff, but if you're gonna leave it sitting for a while, you really wanna make sure everything's greased, um, all that kind of stuff will massively benefit because you don't want your bearings drying out or going rusty and all that kind of stuff. So it's literally a case of, you know, again, taking the wheels out, make sure everything's greased up. I like to use an airline. So after I've jet washed my bike, I airline my bike off to make sure there's there's not a lot of moisture on there, which is a good tip if you've got a compressor and an air gun. Um, everything from moisture gets in all your fluids, brake fluids, um, clutch fluid especially because of the temperature with the clutch fluid will boil a lot quicker than the um, brake fluid so let me let me ask this quick so how how frequently would you recommend uh, re-bleeding clutches and brakes on I mean, bikes if you're riding it really I mean they say every two years obviously on brake fluid but I'll do it way more often than that you know you're talking every sort of two to three months depending on how you're using it the clutch, you will feel the clutch start dragging, probably quite bad, um, purely because the, the fluid's getting a right kicking up there. So just, they're easy to change, bleed them. Um, check everything from your brake discs, you know, thickness on brake discs is very important. It always has a minimum thickness on the brake discs, well most brake discs do. If they don't, refer to the manual, it will tell you, you know, this is a Galford disc, Minimum thickness is 3.5 mil. That's minimum thickness. So again, you know, just get your verniers and just give them a check. Obviously that's five mil because it's a brand new motorbike um, and Cole's not really that fast. So, <laughs> um, you know, they're real important things. You'll get uneven brake pad wear as well. Um, and you know, they're your brakes. So you want them to be as efficient as you can. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that I think is, is sometimes overlooked is the um, mud gets in, in the brake discs. Um, some of the more advanced guys, uh, experts and pros, they uh, uh, in some situations drag the rear yeah. uh, brake a little bit and it does take a hammering. Um, we've, we've certainly seen very thin rear brake discs on some bikes. What, so what about um, all of the wheel bearings, linkage bearings, all that stuff sits fairly low on the bike. My assumption is that they take quite a lot of hammering through the winter, not only from the riding and wet conditions, but the constant washing. They do. I mean, every, everyone's got their own way of checking stuff. You know, to check wheel bearings, it's, a, it's a real simple. Get it on a stand so it's off the floor. You'll feel the movement. You know, just give it a wiggle side to side. Um, you know, spin it. You can feel, if you put your hand on here, you'll feel if it's dry and grunchy. You know, if they are like that, then obviously that's time to replace them. But to, to try and prevent that, you you know, 
when you're jet washing and stuff like that, try not to point the jet wash straight into the, the seal yeah. area because you will get water in there. You know, if it's dry, take them out, grease up the seals, you know, if they're in good condition. And again, you know, linkage, bearings, all that kind of stuff, you'll feel horrible movement here. Again, side to side. You're just really trying to find that noticeable um, knocking noise and, and you know grunchiness in the bearings again with the head bearings you'll feel grunchiness side to side that's just where the bearings run dry yeah and you, you'll probably take them out and notice that they're full of rust you know and no grease so and um, electrical connections and things like that there's, there's various different sprays out there maintenance sprays you know again after you've jet washed it maybe just give it a bit of a coat with like a some kind of silicon spray you know, the, these suffer badly with with um, all the connections getting real rusty under the seat. So just pop your seat up, make sure your battery terminals are nice and not nicely greased. Um, and again, you can coat underneath there with silicon spray to try and prevent corrosion setting in. Um, they're just real handy little tips, you know. I try and do mine every time I go out on it. That's just me. So yeah. So Dan, I know as men we're not very good at reading the bloody manual. <laughs> 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 Why should we read the manual? It's just real basic, <laughs> getting to know your motorbike, safety, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it, and it's just all here in black and white. I know I've already said it, but you know, you've got a service schedule here. It tells you hours. Obviously, you can re refer to your clocks, see how many hours you've got. If you're bored at home and you've got nothing to do, like in this current situation that we've got, just go to your manual. Oh, my bike's done 40 hours. You know, you can go down all the way through the list down to you know looping your chain adjusting your chain and all that kind of stuff is is real easy you can go to the section adjusting tank, uh, chain tension which again is a, is a real simple it gives you the me measurement basically of, of what and to do, so. as a professional mechanic you obviously try and follow the manufacturer's recommendations as close as possible but are there any stuff that you would maybe sometimes do earlier than what the manufacturer recommends? For the chain, chain tension is real important. You know, the last thing you want is your chain to come off and go through your engine and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, lube it, constantly lube it. There's various different chain lubes out there. I'm not a great fan of wax. I know some people are, but I'm not. Um, cleaning your chain is real important. You get all the grit out of it um, and, you know, Again, don't go just using brake cleaner, use like a proper chain cleaner because it's an O-ring chain. Well, most off-road bikes are O-ring chains, especially on these EXCs. Um, try and lube up the chain real good. Try not to coat the rear shock, which is quite important. A lot of people spray it in that direction of the rear shock, you know, through the gap. Mm -hmm. If you end up coating the rear shock with chain lube, it's going to attract more dirt on the stanchion of the, the rear shock, which again will end up doing your seals on your rear yeah, shock. Yeah, that's a great tip. Um, so yeah, you know, just, just go through the whole manual. Yeah, what we see on our bikes, especially for the more technical riding, we use very small front sprockets, sometimes at 12. Yeah. They wear very quickly and that has an impact on chain wear as well, right? Exactly. So it's, yeah, it's worth know, keeping an eye on that stuff. It all wears together. You know, a, a chain it doesn't stretch, it wears. So obviously the further back it's going, the more yep. worn it is. Um, you know, if, if it is, that far worn, replace it. It's a vital part of your motorbike, you yep. know, which is under a lot of strain. So it gets expensive when uh, chains break. Gets expensive. We've got everything from cleaning your air filter, changing your fuel filter. You know, KTM are very good when it comes to changing the fuel filters. I'll show you how to do that later on. Uh, basically, they're real tiny little filters that go in to the the fuel line. Uh, pick them out, put a new one in. Again, that is a vital part of your fuel system. That makes a lot we've we've had a lot of bikes in non-running because people never change them it will stop your bike from running and with the new bikes you do get two or three in the box but you it's don't. worth taking them with you when you're out on the trails 100 percent. put them yeah. in your little backpack or you know cole does a really good um seat pad or yeah. seat bag stick them in there stick them in there they are real tiny so maybe put them in a plastic bag um what yeah. about air filter how often do you change the air filter in your bikes air filters are probably I check mine. I, I'm quite finicky with my bike, so I'll always go and ride it. If I do a three hour enduro, I'll, I'll, I'll clean the air filter straight away. You know, when I when I come back and clean it. But two, three rides, take it out, or at least pop the cover off and have a little look and see how bad the condition is. If it's in real bad condition, 
replace it or you there is various cleaning kits that you can buy there's no drawback to cleaning it too often is there no, so you might as well just do it more often than more often than not another little important tip is try not to over oil the air filters you yeah. know that, that's quite important you're gonna basically suffer the bike from not getting enough air yeah. so make sure you ring it out properly again it's all in the manual so if you're you know if you unsure of what's in the manual give me a call yeah cool it's all in there uh, so one of the main jobs we're doing today and the reason i came to dan's workshop is uh two things on my bike the first one is uh, fitting a new uh headstock bearing uh i'm moving the extric triple clamps from my old bike onto my new bike uh, and so they got quite a bit of wear on the, the previous bike uh, we tighten them down a bit more than normal to stabilize the steering uh, for rough technical conditions and so the headset bearings uh, they, they do wear I mean that, that one's been on there for for probably a year it's, it's done multiple events days in Wales etc uh, but we like to keep them fresh um, they're only 25 pounds it's not like it breaks the bank to do them, but it's a tricky job. I prefer a professional like Dan doing it rather than, than me hacking away at trying to get a bearing um, off. He's got all the right tools in his workshop, and so it's, it's very quick and easy for him, for him to do. Uh, the other thing today is uh, we're putting on a uh, recluse clutch cover. A lot of people see this on my bike, and I ask if I use a recluse clutch. Uh, I don't. Um, for technical riding, I personally prefer the stock clutch. Um, I feel I've got better control over the engine, especially when I load up the engine. Uh, we use this cover predominantly for strength. Uh, it's made from, um, from billet aluminium. It's much thicker and stronger than the stock clutch cover that's made from magnesium. Uh, the stock clutch cover is pretty easy to break if you fall over in the rocks. Um, and also this clutch cover um, is slightly wider and slightly more square in profile and so it allows you to run a fraction more oil in your engine um, not a huge amount but um, uh, you know a little bit just enough to make a difference um, but you know predominantly we use these for strength and protection of the engine um, um, really great bit of kit cool so this is what you do when you've got the right tools it, it just makes life a lot easier if you've got the right tools rather than going at your your triple clamps with a, a hammer and a, a chisel yeah there is loads of different ways of doing it this is just a quick simple easy way of getting that lower ice bearing off the shaft um yeah i've seen people using chisels and grinders and things like that it, it always scared me a little bit because i yeah. think it's too easy to damage that shaft that's, it, it that's is, on there. you know and not only that you want to make sure when you're putting the bearing back on that it's going to sit nice and flush and you know you're not going to butcher this area of the clamp um so it's just you know sometimes they are a pain paint to get out i know on these that it's not going to be that difficult because i do them all the time and all you're doing is just you're just pushing this shaft out Down. of the clamp as you can see it's moving yeah. pretty easy and all i'm really doing that for is just to get this lower race bearing off without damaging anything yeah um yeah pretty straightforward so obviously you want to make sure if you are going to go down this press route that you're not bending um the clamp yep so you need to make sure that it's supported properly where yep. the bearing's coming out yes and it's moving pretty easy and there you go. that is out cool. you remove your bearing and then we'll just press the clamp back in yeah and easy. all we do we'll just turn it upside down and press it back in so that's your lower rice bearing off we can clean all that up put the new bearing on press it back on Job happy done. days well you can see here dan works on pretty much any kind of a bike uh, this is a pretty special machine right here there's not many of these made in the world it's a ducati desmo um very 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 fancy and expensive uh bike a lot of these bikes some of them run carbon wheels uh dan has been involved in british superbike a little bit and so has done quite a bit of stuff on that um his son's uh osset these Ossets are stunning little bikes my kids grew up on them as well um really fun to play around on these don't make a lot of noise don't annoy the neighbors uh require virtually no maintenance um they, they're great little machines um, i'll show you some of the other stuff that's here so dan's got a pretty sizable workshop 
carries uh, usually a lot of oils, uh, fluids, uh, etc. in stock. Uh, he has uh, other regular parts, seals and bearings and things that he carries in stock. Uh, works on a number of other bikes. Uh, pretty spectacular iron horse right here. The stunning custom paint job as well. You can see that. Uh, there's even a, a quad hiding back there. Um, really wide collection of motorbikes that Dan works on all the time. He's pressing tools, etc. So Dan, what are you up to now? So now I pressed the new bearing on. Yeah. Real simple, real easy. Didn't even break a sweat getting the old bearing off. Uh, yeah. Putting the new bearing on. It's just quick and efficient using a press. I can't, you can get in a bit of bubble with it, especially sometimes they can get seized in the actual clamp itself, bit of heat. Um, but again, you know, people are going to do their own thing. This is the old bearing. You can see rust and a good year's worth of riding um, yeah. compared to the new bearing. Yeah, it's pretty warm. In the bike, you've got uh, another race that you've got to knock out, which we've yeah, done. And put, put a new one in. Um, yeah. And again, you know, because they go together as a pair, right? Exactly so you want that. to. So they wear uh, together, they pit together, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, grease. There's various different greases out there. I like to use the Putulene Racing grease. Yeah. Um, it's just nice, thick. Give it a good, good coat of grease. Bit messy, so make sure you've got a, a bit of rag handy. Just go around the bearing. Yeah, and you want to really get the grease tucked right into in that there, yeah. those the, because the cage is quite uh, it's got some spaces in it, and I exactly. suppose if you can get grease packed in there, then you keep water out, right? That's so it. you can never have enough, and you can always wipe the excess excess off yep. when you've fitted it in the bike. Yeah. I see a magnifying glass here. Is that old age and you can't see what you're doing? Or? <laughs> Mate, it's going. 20 years of doing this stuff, man. It takes its toll, you know? Yeah. I'm catching up with you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> What's your background then? Where, where, How did you start in all of this? Um, I've done my apprenticeship with Honda UK. I was their guinea pig for three years when I was 16. Yeah. Um, a local Honda dealer down the road, Double Motorcycles. Uh, we basically, we've done that together with Honda UK. Um, Came from there, learnt my craft from there really. Um, went to you know various different dealers like Aprilia dealers and done a bit with Aprilia, um, and then yeah, just back and forth. Done a lot with the British, you know, prepping race bikes and all that kind of stuff. And then I just ventured out on my own and haven't looked back. So yeah, all good. You want to give it a bit of bit of grease up in there as well, just all around the cup. You know, don't be tight with it. It's only a bit of grease. You can always go and buy some more. Yeah. Um, spread it all around, and again, really, just do the same with the top race yeah. bearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give it an ample fall. You told me previously that the top bearing actually takes a bit more of a hammering than the. It does, you know, when you when you're doing your wheelies and it jumps and all that kind of stuff, all the weight is going to go onto that top bearing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bottom bearing tends to get more dirt and rust and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Purely because of you know gravity, when you again jet washing yeah. your bike and all that kind of stuff, the water Ends just tends there. to sit on the bearing, which really wears the bearing a lot faster than the top one. But yeah, but the top one takes the the forces. Takes the full punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. So now we put the forks in, get them lined up roughly where you want them. You know, some people like them at different angles and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we just yeah, you'd run them, you'd run them a bit higher just to show everybody. You'd run them a bit higher here through for technical riding and makes the bike steer a bit quicker yeah or when you're doing sand riding or you're doing really fast stuff um motocross track type stuff fast event type stuff you'd lower your fork in the clamps a little bit um small changes has big effects so don't think that that two or three millimeters doesn't make a difference it does make a huge difference that's right and uh, you know a lot of people have got their own way of that they want to run them uh, it's a bit of an art and riders are different um, so yeah, put them roughly where you need them, and then we'll just talk up the clamps. We do it nice and even. So we've got 17 millimeters on these bottom ones. And on the x rigs they talk up a bit higher than on the stock uh, KTM clamps because the clamps are more round. They don't 
uh, squeeze the tube as much. So do check your own forks uh, and clamps torque settings. So these these are 21 at the top and yep. 17 down the bottom on the X strings. Cool. There you go. Nice. Right. So Dan, talk us through uh, tightening up the uh, and fitting the front wheel. So now we've got. We've got the wheel spindle wheel. Um, all we're going to do without tightening the clamps for the minute, we'll yeah. just tighten the main spindle nut. Yeah. We'll just give that nip up. Yeah. Make sure you know everything's in line with your brake guard because these tend to move about as well. Yeah. And then we'll tighten the right hand side up first. When you're looking at the bike from the front. Yeah. Again, don't go mad, you'll be talking then later. Yeah. Um, this side is the floating side. Yeah. So obviously you want to just bounce the bike up and down a few times so it's going to be in its natural position. Yeah. Then you'll tighten that clamp up. Yeah. And if you don't do that, what, what you're doing is you're putting undue wear on your seals yep. up here. And so then you have a situation where you might have an oil leak because you're, you're, you're getting it. So what we'll do is we'll bounce the bike up and down a bit, get the fork to settle in the right place. Cool. Get it back on the stand. And we can see it's sitting in the right place and then you nip them up. And talk to them to the right settings. That's right. So you can see here we're going to put the new recluse clutch cover on. And you can see, looking at the two clutch covers, you can see how the stock clutch cover sort of curves inwards and how the recluse one is uh, more sort of uh, square edged in a way. And so you, so you can see that um, comparatively, the recluse uh, clutch cover will hold a little bit more oil because of the shape of the clutch cover itself uh, when it goes on. So that's why we do it. Uh, this is a little tip worth knowing uh, if you don't. A lot of the uh, KTM and Husqvarna uh, clutches have got a pressure plate that you can adjust to add preload onto your clutch. And this changes how hard the clutch bites. Uh, there's a little number one on there. You can't see it very, very uh, easily. You've got to just look carefully. There's a two under the screw and there's a three there. So it's got three different preload settings on the clutch plates uh, that allows the clutch to either bite slightly less for very slippery conditions or bite slightly more for the more aggressive conditions like um, like motocross um, etc. Um, all KTMs I believe come with it set a standard in the number two setting you might want to play around and, and see if uh, there's one of the other settings that's more appropriate for your riding style and your riding conditions. So, uh, Dan, talk to us about oils, because obviously uh, everybody has different opinions about oils. You get many different types. You get the 1550 uh, from Motrex. You get other high quality racing, fully synthetics oils. This is one from Motol that is uh, 1040. What do you kind of recommend uh, we fit to a bike? Pretty boring again, and uh, uh, I'm going to repeat myself again. Look in the manual, it's going to tell you what you're going to need. Um, so, obviously, on this KTM 300, gearbox oil, engine oil, it's saying 15 weight 50. Um, always use a good branded oil. Obviously, KTM, they say to use Motrex. I'm sure Motor will do a, a 1550 as well. Just make sure it's a good quality branded oil. Um, you know, it says in the book how much you've got to put in the bike. So obviously on this one, 0.8 yeah. of a litre. So just under a litre. Yeah. Pour it in and away you go. Yeah. And something that's worth knowing on the, the KTMs themselves, they um, have a, a little oil level bolt just under there. So as long as your bike is level uh, with your bike standing up, um, you can pour your oil into um, the, the the clutch cover there and you wait until you see a little bit of oil appearing out of the little little peak hole and then you know you've reached full capacity. Uh, this is important to do when you're doing regular oil changes because when you drain the oil out of your bike you don't always get all of the old oil out so what you don't want to do is overfill the, the engine by just um, 
putting in too much oil a good habit to get into is to use your little uh, peak hole to see when you reach full capacity um, um, in terms of oil uh, so Dan tell us what, what's going on here then so on this uh, particular KTM 300 uh, the customer basically called me and and said that the bike's excessively smoking um, obviously being a TPI the the oil is controlled going into the engine so it's a little bit suspicious he says it's quite a lot of uh, white heavy thick smoke i've got a sneaky suspicion that it's probably the crank seal which is behind these sprockets here so yeah. we're going to see obviously if there's any nicks or anything in the crank seal it's basically if it is the crank seal it's just drawing in gearbox oil into the combustion chamber which is then burning off causing excessive smoke we hope Anyway, now we're in this area, we've noticed that the clutch is absolutely horrendous. Let me show you. Um, it was also saying that the clutch is dragging. So, you know, that's a number of things down to um, bleeding the clutch, like I said earlier. Yeah. Um, but looking at these plates, it's definitely done its uh, life and it absolutely stinks as well. Mm. Not uncommon. You know, KTM clutches, the genuine ones are really strong. Uh, really impressed with the, the genuine stuff that KTM bring out. Yep. So we're going to put a brand new clutch kit in it. Again, you know, if you have a little look at the difference. Yeah. Um, it's just really down to use. You know, you always change your oil regularly. Um, but they get hot. They take abuse. And, you know, that's what we do. And so what do you do with the new clutch plates before the, you fit them? The new clutch plates, basically, it comes in this handy little um, plastic tray. Yeah. You must soak the new clutch for at least, you know, I like to do it for half an hour to an hour. Yeah. To let the oil soak into the friction material. Yeah. You'll notice it when you pour it all in. Loads of bubbles will come out. Um, never put it in dry because it will kill the clutch within about two seconds. Yeah. So that's a really important bit of advice that you need to do. Cool. Um, so yeah, we'll just take the clutch out, we'll disassemble everything uh, and have a little look at that crank seal and see if there's any damage to it. Sounds good. Uh, Dan, so just tell us real quick, how do you inspect the crankshaft seal? So what we're going to, now we've buzzed the basket off, um, yeah. you've got the counterbalance shaft here. I don't know if you can notice, but if you are going to attempt this yourself, you've got two little dots yeah. that need to be bang on in line when you reassemble um, the gears. Yeah. And that just makes sure everything's in the right position. That's the counterbalancer there that removes the vibration yeah. from these new modern two strokes, right? That's so. right. And this is the crankshaft. Yeah. Um, and the seal sits right behind it. Exactly. So we're going to take this off and the seal is going to sit behind here. We'll get to that in a minute and have a little look. Cool. Cool. So you guys can see the crank seal. So we found a small nick in it. So Dan, what do we do now? Obviously, what's happening there? It's just drawing in gearbox oil, which is burning it off, causing excessive smoke. So we'll hook that seal out, replace the seal, reinstall everything. We're soaking the clutch now, so that will be ready to go back in. Fill it with gearbox oil, coolant. Uh, we should be good to go. Uh, Dan, just for the video, uh, how do people get hold of you? Uh, you're based in Surrey and Gosh Shorten, so um, South London. Yeah, we've got a website, it's dmpmotorcycles.co.uk. Um, yep. Also, the phone number 0208 669 Anything you need, give me a call. Cool, you're on Facebook as well, right? Facebook so people can well. find you on yeah. there. DM Performance. Yeah, DM Performance. Cheers, guys. Thanks, cheers.